All right. So welcome everyone to God Fridays, round two, good versus evil. Um, I'm just going to have a little disclaimer here. All right. Uh, so um, welcome to God Friday discussions. As we embark on this journey together, it's important to acknowledge the diversity of thoughts, beliefs, and experiences that each of us brings to the table. Our discussions are rooted in the spirit of exploration, learning, and mutual respect. The views expressed are those of the individual participant, participants and are presented for the purpose of open dialogue and personal reflection. Please note, we recognize and honor the freedom of personal belief. This platform does not advocate for any singular viewpoint as the absolute authority on spiritual matters. Our discussions are intended as a safe space for sharing and growth. We encourage you to approach each session with an open heart and mind, but also respect your personal boundaries. If at any point you find the content not to your liking or comfort, you are free to disengage as you see fit. While we seek to provide enriching content, participation is entirely voluntary. We assume no, no responsibility for any personal decisions or interpretations made in response to our discussions. Our aim is to foster a community where curiosity, faith, and understanding can flourish. Thank you for joining us on this journey. All right. All right, man. I like I like the disclaimer, man. Yeah. I feel I, I feel though as we as we grow in this, we're not gonna need it, man. Like either yeah, maybe you, not. Yeah, I, I feel like either you you like us or you don't. And we're we don't have any solid expectations out of this, just, you know, having solid dialogues and seeing where it goes. So we were getting into it, right? And you, uh, you know, you got into the disclaimer. So last week we, uh, we had an in-depth conversation about what is good and what is evil. And I think we would both agree, like we just discussed, that good and evil would be under these spectrums one one promotes a relationship with god and one inhibits a relationship with god so last week we kind of talked about what do you think is good and what do you think is evil when you gave your perspective i didn't really get to give mine so we're going to continue it today well and okay so one thing i remember from your perspective that was that popped out to me was how suffering is uh, a part of love and mm -hmm. i thought that was and that was a point i really disagreed on actually because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think suffering is part of love, but I think pain is a part of love. Maybe we're probably we're, we're, it's probably one of the moments that I'll bring this analogy back up. The sky is blue. No, it's not red. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. But I think words are important because suffering. Um, uh, suffering implies like it's actually like self. You put it on yourself, but pain is just like a feeling that's more. Um, you can interpret it in different ways or something. So like, like, for instance, going to the gym today, um, I think working out is kind of a good analogy for like pain slash suffering to get closer to God in a way. Um, mm -hmm. But like you it. So how you work, like when I work out now, I'm, <laughs> I go full, full God mode, like Jesus mode, like I'm like, the wow. power of Jesus, like every <laughs> for all those classes, <laughs> I'm literally thinking that shit, man. And it really it does make it feel better, like the pain and stuff. It like mm -hmm. allows me to um, kind of interpret it almost in a different way. And so it it doesn't feel like suffering. Actually, it feels like you know, yeah, it maybe there's some struggle or something, but um, as if I'm interpreting it like, um, if I'm like some, I pray, I pray in my workout now too. I'm like, God, give me strength, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I, and well, I understand. Yeah. So, I know, I, I understand what you're saying, but I'm still going to revert back to 100. percent It is suffering. Something, yeah, this is part of the that's part of the process. So that pain yeah. that you're talking about in a moment is voluntary, right? It's yeah. something you're willing. Oh, it's I something you're something. willing to. Uh, you want to do. So you're willing to experience that pain. So when we when we look at what Scripture tells us, like when Jesus was about to go on the cross and die for all of our sins, 
actually asked God if there was another way. Like, but if it's your will, I'll follow your will. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. even, even he went to a point where, like, God in the flesh, where he was God, right? And he still questioned, like, dang, I'm really, do I really have to do this? Right. I mean, and when we break it down, while he was suffering, people were mocking him. People were spitting at him. So have you seen the movie The Passion of the Christ? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's I, the thing that comes to mind whenever you say Jesus like on the cross suffering. I'm imagining that that scene from Passion of the Christ. Yeah, so there's a scene, right? Yeah. Where after they were like flogging him when, you know, they're putting that thing on his back and the skin's ripping off whatever. Maybe I'm getting the timing in the movie mixed up, but there's a scene where they dip this sponge into a um a bucket. I don't know if you remember this scene. Because he was so thirsty, and they dipped this sponge into a bucket, and then they put that sponge in his mouth to uh, give him what it what it seemed like quench his thirst, right? Mm. Well, a lot of people don't understand like the significance of this, and I this is through uh, a reputable acquaintance that like the the person that actually introduced me to the church and got my family say. But he's the one that told me like that specifically. So that scene. So the Romans were actually in an advanced civilization where plumbing and like sewage was like a thing, right? And they were like very hygienic in manners, right? And what they used to like clean themselves when they went to the bathroom was a sponge. So that sponge was actually when they were putting it in his mouth, it was something like they used to like clean themselves after they went to the bathroom. And that's how they how they uh Punched his thirst, man. So while this dude is going through this extreme torture, you know, whatever's in that sponge, man, we have no idea. You know, it could be uh, whatever. Urine. And that, yeah, uh, urine, feces, uh, blood, who knows, man, you know? Um, and that's what they put in his mouth when he asked for uh, thirst. That's disgusting. Now, while it, exactly. <laughs> and, but that's... So just to understand like what he actually went through and uh while he's going through this process, man, um he's going through this torture, even before, like I mentioned, he was is there another way? If there's no other way, then let you let your will be done, right? And uh while he's going through this torture, he uh Father, forgive them, they know not what they do, right? Not God punish these people for you see me, you see them now that this is what he was exactly put here for. And even he questioned, is there another way? You know what I mean? If there's no other way, then let your will be done. And he literally suffered. Oh, me and you can have this conversation. And that's just, you know, that's just the. the so another, the uh, another one thing I heard about the suffering, like when Jesus was carrying the cross and getting all that, you know, basically getting tortured it was uh it's it was actually him disconnecting from god and experiencing like the hum humanity basically and well, i feel like that, i i feel like when you when you talk about that i feel like that was his whole experience as a human so he was 100% man at the same time and 100% god at the same time so as as a man, he did feel those feelings of, dang, do I really want to go through this bef before the the crucifixion? Do I really want to go through this because it's gonna suck? Yeah, it's really gonna suck. And then these people are in, in his mind. These people, they hate me. He says the world hated me, so it'll hate you, right? So they hate me. Uh, do I really want to die? I mean, I, I don't know if that was going through his mind, but. There's no scripture that really suggests that, but, uh, you know, the people hated him and he still was willing to go on and suffer. Even for those people that hated him and like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's suffering. That's suffering. And, you know, a way, a way I interpret that is that that's kind of everyone's experience. We kind of come into this world. um forgetting that we are connected with God, like, like intimately connected with God. And, um, 
we and when we and when we forget that and we take the material world for absolute reality then we feel that same suffering that Jesus felt um and that is part of our journey it it is part of um our evolution i guess and so but then once you connect with god you don't have to suffer anymore like god takes care of everything well so i think that's a myth as well though I man like mm. just because you're connected with god doesn't mean you won't suffer it doesn't mean that you won't catch cancer it doesn't mean you won't catch yeah i mean disease you, some some terminal you always illness. have what you always it? have the choice so you always have the choice to connect or not and so you can suffer but it's always your choice to reconnect or not well i think i think what we would probably agree on in that aspect is that yeah. it's it's ah uh, it is uh up to you to say i'm just going to give it to god and he's in he's in charge jesus has the wheel i could sit here and i could mope and i could uh i could be in this moment where i could hate god where i could say you you did this to me but just because you get cancer doesn't mean god gave it to you that's what i believe you know i don't like when when, when people say things like everything happens for a reason i don't well I, I i i, I would, so i, I think that. i would say getting cancer is like uh us maybe i think we create the cancer ourselves through our whatever beliefs and actions and then um it's actually a gift like every mistake is actually a gift from god and it's um and then, yeah, it's just like it actually leads you down a, a different path when you when shit goes down. Like my back, for instance, got that herniated disc. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit, man? <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, what I think what it was was just a lot of fear, fear being stored up in my body. And it manifested itself as pain and suffering. And um and now and but the thing the thing is like any mess you make with your beliefs or your body your physical actions can be cleaned up and uh god god helps you with the cleanup too so well, it's, god, well god also works through people as well man so i, I would say I, I would say that like sometimes doctors are you know god's prescription prescription as well it's not so we, we 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 like to look at god like this everything is just supernatural right and like he's just this almighty healing which he is but not for every circumstance right um you know what i mean uh, i don't know i think it's i think you it's completely up to you you can like you can you can be like a little more crazy and say god heals me in every circumstance or you can and you, maybe your faith is super 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 strong so you can make that happen but um i think yeah like god works through other people too and when when you connect with other people that god god is strong in these connections like god wants us to connect with each other so uh yeah like um that's kind of like one thing one weird thing I kind of do now is like, I'll see God in everyone. And so, including you. <laughs> so when I talk with you, I'm, I'm listening for God. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeking uh, God, seeking God in you, but also I have to remember in me too. So it's like, it's like a dance. Well, I'll say this, man. God puts people in your path for a purpose. So we shouldn't be acting within our power, like right? Like, for example, I, I really feel convinced why why you reached out to me the other day, like, you know, and you're like, hey man, I want to start, you know, doing what it is that we're doing. And, you know, we had a little two hour conversation which led to, you know, another conversation which led to that uh last week. And uh 
I feel like I know why we're linked at this exact moment in time. Why? But I've also tell seen, me. Well, 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 no, 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 no. That's that's the whole purpose. I'm not supposed to tell you. And what? <laughs> yes, yes. I honestly, honestly, I feel that that's the whole purpose. I am not supposed to tell you. I feel like I know exactly why we're linked at this moment in time, and we're having. Uh, tell this... me, bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, no. all right, fine. <laughs> Secret. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm just knocking the door. I'm on in the car. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I feel like I know why we're linked at this exact moment in time, but I'm not supposed mm -hmm. to tell you, right? But like, it's also. I'm not supposed to act on my own. Uh, hold on. I wonder what he's saying. <laughs> I just can't have any moment in my house or any moment of time. But anyway, uh, I feel like I know exactly why, but I'm not also supposed to, I'm not here to convince you or not convince you. Convince you is the bad word. I'm not here to sway you. I'm not here to, um, it's literally... I guess that's all I can explain at the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if that yeah. makes any sense to you. That makes sense. So, that makes sense. Because one thing I'm, I get I'm, is that we're all on our own journeys. So it's mm -hmm. like you can't really pull people to your journey. And, you know, that's not – you like God. God God handles it. Like just have faith that God handles it. And then, um, yeah, you just can enjoy your own journey and enjoy well, the journey of others. It's not like – yeah, it's you. Yeah, I think the idea of trying to influence or convince people isn't really the idea. It's more to uh, experience and be in the moment and enjoy mm -hmm. the the discussions and stuff like that. Yeah, yep, something of that nature, man. And but I feel like there's a this isn't coincidence why we're having these conversations and these conversations are going to continue, obviously, right? So anyway. Let's get back to the, the 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 conversation about good versus evil, right? Yeah. So you said I mentioned about suffering, and 100%, I still 100% believe that. And I gave my uh, explanation for it, and maybe you understand what I'm saying in that aspect as well. But also, what I would say, what falls under the con the the category of good would be obedience. Okay. So obedience would be adhering to God's law, and it's defined what his law is, you know? And I would think that you being the human that you are, if you actually, like, read in the Bible what God describes as his law, you wouldn't agree, you wouldn't disagree with anything within it, man, you know what I mean? Maybe there's a few things that you'd say, like, oh, I don't know about that, but at the end of the day, it's still his law, Right? But I would say about 99% of the things you would say, oh, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. I can see that. And uh, the, the scripture I sent you is the other day after we had the conversation on Friday. Oh, was it uh, love, love the Lord with all your heart and soul? Like this is the greatest commandment. And then what was it? Love, your, love yourself or love your others as you love yourself was the second commandment, right? So if you love God and you love him with all your heart and soul, like, you're going to put him first, right? And uh, obedience. So how can you love something and be disobedient? You know what I mean? So when you're disobedient, when you're obedient, I guess, is what I would consider good. And having a conversation of what obedience means would probably be a whole other topic and another discussion we could have. Totally. But what Next separate, week. Yeah, what's <laughs> Yeah, what, what separates you, what inhibits that relationship with God is sin, okay? Disobedience, essentially. Uh, so sin, I, I think if we had a conversation uh, on another day of time as well, like what is sin? Like we could actually go down the list what God defines as sin. I, I would venture to say that you wouldn't disagree with like 99% of it, man. You'd be like, oh, yeah, I can see that. And it's really, you can break it down like into two, you know, how he says, love the Lord and God with all your heart and soul, with all your heart, mind and soul, and love uh, others as you love yourself. 
it's really like, uh, don't be an asshole and like don't fuck people over. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind, of, it's kind, of, it's kind of that simple when you really break it down, man. Don't well, be an asshole. And don't you know, fuck there's actually over. so there was an interesting. Um, maybe I'll try and tell the story. I don't know. It's I'm not so good at it. Uh, let's see. So, uh, so in Hindu philosophy or whatever there's there's this thing called dharma and karma oh god this isn't gonna be good okay so <laughs> <laughs> so actually let me let me go let me before i get to that let me talk about uh the scripture of the day for me so this is from the bhagavad gita chapter 9 verse 22 to those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. And so um, there's another, uh, there's multiple translations of this. And one of the uh, translations what that mentions the yoga of discrimination. And this yoga of discrimination basically from what I'm understanding, is knowing the difference between Atman and Maya. So words, uh, so these words, Atman means the unchanging and what is real. And it's basically what God is. Like, that's what the Hindus say God is, Atman. And then there's Maya, which is the changing or the unreal. And that's like our three-dimensional material world, which is always changing. But we say it's, they, they say it's not real, basically. And so the yoga of discrimination is knowing the difference between the two. Um, and so that is kind of like uh, a constant learning journey of knowing, um, yeah, no, being able to discriminate between the unchanging and the changing. And uh, back to the line, to those who are constantly devoted and worship me, which is, I think that would be the Atman, with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like that you bring these kind of things up, man, right? Um, so when we go back to the Old Testament, an Old Testament God... I actually like Old Testament, man. Like Old Testament yeah. God, that that gangster God. I like that gangster God, bro. That God, God is his, pretty gangster, man. The gangster, man. God does some gangster shit, about, man. Gangster shit for real, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. So, so, but every, everything he did was fully just. Like we don't understand the gravity of how things got bad, right? So when we talk about like other deities deities or what's the proper way of saying it deities i say deities oh. i think <laughs> deities deities whatever right so yeah. when we talk about other deities right like remember when i told you at the beginning god said let us let let's let us make man in our image and there was like a a debate on that like who was he talking about some people say that jesus was actually present during that time some people actually say like the there was like a council present like you know other Angels, let's call them, right? And what Christianity teaches us is that long before the creation of heaven and earth, right, there was a fallout, like a battle in heaven, right, where a rebellion came. And if you look at this, this actually coincides with Greek myth. What they call let's call it Greek theology. They call it mythology. I'm gonna say theology because I actually believe that shit was real, bro. I, I, I believe that Greek theology was a real thing. Like, those were real spiritual entities, right? So when you look at the story, like, the Battle of the Titans, like, they, they talk about how they got jealous of, you know, the authority and how they rebelled against it, right? And that's the same with Christianity. And uh, we, we can really go deep down the rabbit hole, but not today, obviously. But, you know, the Book of Enoch, like, explains it. The, the first book, first Enoch, was about the Watchers. And that's like kind of like the story getting into like Noah and all this. But uh, God 
mentions that there are other the God of the Bible, uh, Yahweh, Jehovah, Jireh, you know, whatever his other names are, but Yahweh, yeah. Yahweh, which actually means I am, right? Mm. Which I, I am, like uh, that's it. I am. I'm God, like basically Lord. But Yahweh actually says, "Don't." And we'd have to probably go back to like ancient Hebrew text of what the actual verbiage was, but thou shalt not put any other gods before me. So he tells you 100% that there are other spiritual entities out there that are real, hmm. but I am the ultimate authority. Like, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, yeah, it kind of comes to mind with the Hindu. Uh, there's a lot of um, avatars or other gods that uh, personify kind of the 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 main atman so there's atman mm. atman is actually unmanifested unchanging infinite knowledge infinite whatever infinite it's the infinite and then out of that uh the hindus created all these gods with all different personalities and stuff and um yeah it's very it's very interesting Oh, but if you go like the Old Testament, man, they even acknowledge like these Greek gods that the uh, certain cultures like worshipped back in the day. Mm -hmm. And what was the I can't think of the, the woman's name, but she actually specialized the 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 Greek woman, the Greek goddess name. But she actually specialized in like the emasculation of men where men Dina? would. Huh? No, not Athena. Athena. Um, no, 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 not Athena. I can't think of a name. Aphrodite actually, was the, the sexy guy. Was it Aphrodite? Was it Aphrodite? Uh, I don't know she if was it was like, Aphrodite. Very but, sexy. But the, 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 name is, the, the name is actually mentioned in the Bible, bro. And mm. the, God, the God specialized in the emasculation of men where men would... Uh, I don't know if I, chop their genitals off. In honor of this, so what what we're seeing today, like with men doing the same exact thing, is the same, the, the, just the same God manifesting itself, or the same, let's call it the same spiritual entity manifesting itself in modern times. Like there, there's nothing new in this world. Like everything we see now has been a thing before in time, right? So, uh, how you would honor this God would be like by as a man would be like by emasculating yourself. And you know, create making yourself a eunuch, where you chop off your genitals and your your reproductive organs in honor of this God, right? And then you get back. Even if you look into like Old Testament, another God that was mentioned very frequently, Baal, right? And if you really really get into Baal, bro, I I, I encourage you read about Baal in biblical B A A L, Baal, also Moloch. So these are like direct names mentioned within the Bible that ancient civilizations worshipped in place of Yahweh, right? And as a result, like Molech, one of the one of the things Molech, M-O-L-E-C-H, was notorious for was child sacrifice, -E right? Yeah, M-O-L-E-C-H, -E Molech. Okay. So what... You you know that's a type of Tao, right? Um, the Moloch Moloch Tao. It's a type of uh, it's a stay yeah. They made that Tao, bro. Stay <laughs> away from that Tao. But what they specialize in was child sacrifice, right? Right, and, right, right. Yeah, I thought that was super weird. <laughs> yeah, but oh, one of the things that the God Yahweh he tests is child sacrifice. And if you look at like one of the only things that like Jesus like was like really gangster about was like, man, do not harm children. Like do not harm children. Like you, uh, the penalty you will pay will, you're not, you're not ready for it, man. You know? So Molek, I think what they would do is they would heat this statue up and they would, like put their firstborn, if I remember this correctly, they would put their firstborn on this statue, like while it this bronze or whatever statue, while it was like red hot, and they would put their firstborn child on it in honor of the god Molech. And um, 
This yeah, I think, a little I think that's a failure of the yoga of discrimination right there. I think they didn't well, discriminate well, between the Atman and the is, Maya. Well, this is what happens when people, when this was a, a, a Jewish civilization, I think this was the Canaanites. Oh. So if you look up the Canaanites, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I believe it was. So if you look up the Canaanites, right? So the Canaanites came from one of Noah's sons, and I can't remember his name. So okay, I don't want to give the wrong name, but there's a story when Noah was drunk, and I'm not, maybe maybe you have heard this story, but we haven't heard it particularly. But Noah was drunk, and one of his sons, while Noah was drunk and passed out, came in and. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Like the Bible doesn't explicitly give direction on it, but like Noah was really upset with his son, and this son was where the Canaanites came from, and he put a curse on this son that, uh, you know, your 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 ancestors will, you know, whatever. And the Canaanites were the ones that would worship, I think, Moloch. And I don't want to say that I'm 100 percent accurate on that, but I, I just had this conversation the other day, so I'm pretty sure. And uh. Molik was one that uh, one of their main principles was child sacrifice, which is something that God detests. So the Canaanites are one of the civilization that God wiped out the whole civilization from men, women, and children, where it was so bad that there was no helping them. But he gave them opportunity after opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to like fix themselves. And then they just refused to repent, and he wiped out the whole civilization. So, to me, that kind about... of almost feels like a, a battle of the masculine and feminine. Like, if you're sacrificing children, I feel like that's almost the masculine energy, like taking over and not listening to the feminine energy. Because the moms of those kids would probably be like, fuck no, <laughs> you're not sacrificing exactly. my kid. And then the dad was exactly. like, what do you know, bitch? Give me that kid. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, bro. You, you, you. It's funny how you understand things, man. But it's like it's it's a it's a realistic it's a simple perspective. It's a more easy to interpret perspective that you have, right? But like, what is a modern day version of child sacrifice, man? School. <laughs> Let's really really think about it, man. Yeah, I don't know. Really, really think about. It. Abortion. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we've convinced we were able to not. I don't want to say we like me and you, but the world was able to convince women that this living, breathing entity within them was not anything, and that it's okay to kill it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I, I like Bill living, Burr's joke. Living. I like Bill Burr's joke with this. It's like, cake? yeah, cake? <laughs> he took my cake out of the oven and threw it. <laughs> it was going to be a cake. A cake <laughs> if you would have had it for another 15 minutes, you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%, yeah. man. Yeah. You know, yeah, he, 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 he definitely, You're still uh, killing a baby. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is, yeah. gosh. And, and thank God. For Jesus, right? Because you can be still be forgiven for that. Or, you know, when Jesus was on the cross, forgiven for they not know what they do, right? And before there was Jesus, this wasn't an option. Like, you know, when people with child sacrifice, man, God, I'm going to destroy this whole civilization. You know what I mean? But uh, biblically, when it describes how times will be before the rapture, which me and my wife got into the discussion the other day, every day. So just disclosure every day when I get home. Uh, I eat dinner. My wife's got a hot meal there ready, right? And she's like, Wanna uh, do a Bible study? Wanna do a Bible study? That's dope. I'm like, uh <laughs> Yeah, it is, man. I gotta do better, man. But you know, so we get into this <laughs> and I was talking about in in uh in Revelation it talks about before the rapture, it'll he says it'll be like the times of Noah. Okay. And I feel like this is something we should lead into like next week, but like we'll we'll just touch on it at the moment, man. But it'll be like the times of Noah. And in the times of Noah, there's a lot of debate, man. So uh, Enoch, like I just described you, who had like the, there's a book, there's a canon that Enoch has that's not like in the Bible, 
there's like the first Enoch. And I guess first Enoch's one of the only like books that's actually like Christians acknowledge as a substantiated like document that holds water within the uh you know the Christian religion. But like uh first first Enoch uh Genesis is the first thing, right? Huh? Genesis was the first thing, right? In the well, Genesis is the first book in the Bible. Yes. So, so what's where's Enoch in there? Like, it's not in the Bible. Oh, Enoch's not in the Bible. No, no. So it's not Enoch. Enoch was not put into that canon, but Enoch is actually it's it's a it's it's widely acknowledged by Christians as a trustful historical uh, reference, I guess we can call it, right? Okay. So, anyway, anyway, like, what it describes, so the, the Bible really gets into, like, the minute detail of it, but the Enoch, the first book, The Watchers, about the Watchers, like, it gets into, like, the depth of how bad it was. The Bible describes how the sons of God uh, came, during the time of Noah, how the sons of God which, what would you consider the sons of God? A people? Uh, no, no, no. God's the children. Sons of God. No, no, no. Not not God's creation. The sons of God. I would say is the angels, or the fallen angels, or something that actually, so they actually came down to earth, and they seen how beautiful like the creation of man was and they would like just take women and they would breed them right and we're going to get deep down the rabbit hole here in a second so i hope you don't get deterred man. <laughs> let's go that's what we're here for all right all right so how they came down to earth and they just started breeding with humans the human mankind let's call it and these creatures you know like they there's references about nephilim which were a species that came to earth and they were like a giant which is kind of like where we believe goliath came from you know right uh but these species would breed with human beings they would breed with all the species on earth they would breed with reptiles which is maybe where dinosaurs came from right i don't know man this is yeah i don't know so so you believe in dino do you believe in dinosaurs though yeah yeah there's like bones and stuff yeah you've seen the bones Yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, one one of the arguments people would make is that the Bible doesn't describe dinosaurs, but it does describe like giants that came from Earth and breeded with all the species of the Earth, which I believe where dinosaurs came from, right? Mm. And uh, so, there's like arguments about this that yeah. Noah was one of the only species left that was untainted, that was not interbred with these species. Him and his family were like one of the only species left that were not interbred with these species. Wait, wait, one second. My mom's calling. Not right now, <laughs> mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't have a a moment. Somebody knocked on my door, like, hey, I'm out, uh, man. Let me let me finish my <laughs> conversation. But anyway, so like uh the, the there, there there's lots of debate of the perception of because Revelation describes, like, in the end, it'll be like the times of Noah. So what the book of Enoch kind of describes is all the species on Earth were tainted by these demons that came from Earth, that came to Earth and started breeding with human beings. And they created, like, a, you know, these demi-demons, let's call them, right? Demi-gods or demi-demons. And biblically, it, it, it describes this, man. So the Bible describes like demigods. They just don't use the word demigods, right? Because people would say, oh, that's uh, heresy or heretical because there's only one God, which we understand mm-hmm. what we're, the, the point we're trying to convey. So these are species that God created that aren't human, that started breeding with human beings, and they believe that Noah was the last untainted uh species of man on earth and god was going to destroy the world this is one of the theories and one of the and there's other there's other aspects of it right mm. but the point is is in the end it says it'll be like the times of noah and i was really wondering what that meant like so i started diving into it and started like really listening to different uh lectures opinions and, and i'm not saying that people are right or wrong but this is just the 
the theories that some people were, uh, you know, they're conveying their their opinion. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know how they talk about <laughs> this race is going to go deep down the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like people talk about aliens and people talk about uh online there's like a huge discussion. I'm sure you've heard about it before about reptilians, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not I'm not I'm by no means am you know, I saying and, like and the way I actually interpret that is like uh it has to do with how we use our mind. So when you use the prefrontal cortex i'd say that's more like human or whatever but then when you're more in the back of the mind which is more um instinctual that's like the reptilian part of the mind and that's how the mind actually grew over time it grew from the back to the front and uh yeah that i like and part of what makes us human and super awesome is we use a lot of our prefrontal cortex but then yeah so you, yeah no no you're 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 you're, you're on to something but what I was saying was there's a whole genre of a group, let's call it a group of people that truly believe in like this reptilian conspiracy, right? Right. Or this right. reptilian theory. Sure. And I'm not saying I I'm not saying I acknowledge it like oh there's reptilian shapeshifters walking around. But biblically it tells us there were one hundred percent demi Demons, demi gods, whatever we want to call it, that they came down here from Earth and started breeding with human beings, right? So how it happened, it, it could be a whole explanation. I mean, maybe maybe it wasn't a sexual reproduction. Maybe there was some some science behind this, you know, and like some alchemy behind this, something or other that we really can't explain. But uh, I, I, I believe there's truth in when, when people talk about this. Here, here, and I want to give this perspective, right? Mm-hmm. So, for example, my grandmother, um, she grew up in a small town in Mexico, Tamazula uh, de Guadalajara, and Jalisco, where she grew up in a farm. On a, she showered in the river, right? She was telling nice. me a story about. So, when you see something for the first time, right, and you can't explain it, like it's. Oh, let, me, let me tell the story now. So when she, when they first put a theater in her hometown, right? Uh-huh. Everybody went. Everybody went there. This is I don't know back in maybe the forties or something, man. Uh-huh. They put a theater in her hometown, and they went in there, and it was a uh, on the screen. There was a whole movie. And it was about planes. So when these planes came on the screen, everybody ran out of the theater because they thought the planes were going to crash into them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because they didn't they didn't know this was a screen, that this was a projector, that that didn't exist in their minds. Yeah. So when people are explaining something for the first time, they're explaining it in a manner they know how to explain. Like in ancient civilizations, when they talked about flying uh something or other, man. Like they equated it to something they know how to explain it about. Like, you know what I mean? And every like ancient civilization, uh, which the Bible actually just explained the other day, my wife was just explaining. I can't remember the exact word. Never root. Uh, I'll, I'll get more information on, it, but it described what a pyramid is, man. And like biblically, like there's an explanation on a pyramid. Like this is mean? something these, like they 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 talk about it within it. So you know how you got pyramids in Egypt, you got pyramids in like Mexico, you got pyramids in South America. Yeah. But none of these civilizations have ever interacted. So how do they how do they have this same structure everywhere, right? Which makes you believe that these demi or not even these demi, maybe these uh lowercase gods, these lower these these spiritual beings, like when everybody talks about these species that came from the sky, gods that came from the sky, people can call them aliens, whatever. And what mainstream likes to do is use these words that have like a negative connotation so you can dismiss them automatically. When you say aliens, it automatically equates to crazy, right? I mean... Somewhat. Somewhat. I, yeah, like it's a big universe, you know, and we exist, so, you know, aliens probably exist. And... 
it definitely has come to my thought like maybe we're the aliens maybe the aliens brought their stuff Wait. over and actually there's a funny story i heard like like aliens came over and they made us to be slaves to build or to harvest gold or something like that and i don't know i thought that was kind of an interesting kind of funny thought um and then yeah but then they left or whatever and here we are <laughs> well read 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 old testament and then put that theory that you just had and I, I, it would almost explain what exactly what your is you're talking about sure you, you'd be kind of weird man we, we 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 should we should one day dive into like some old testament stuff man like just yeah 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 we'll I, you said you were going to bring scripture bro <laughs> um yeah, yeah no i'm saying like we we should actually like study it one day man like so yeah we'll, honest we'll, i mean we can we can yeah. do like a, a i'll verse, put that on uh, the maybe list like these thick books like don't really appeal to me super much so but well, i'm well, i'm open you, to doing it with you, you yeah well when you when you break it down with a little thing like this at first it might it might really catch your attention man you okay know the thing about the bible man when the yeah. thing about the bible is is like whatever it is you like let's just say you like sex there's a lot of sex in the Bible, bro. Lots, <laughs> lots, yeah. my, lots uh, of sex. My Airbnb roommate Matthew was—he—he uh, he tells me some stories from the Bible. He's well studied in the Bible, so he'll tell me yeah. some like really funny stories uh, of like you know people growing hair on their arms and uh, having sex with like uh, I don't know. I can't remember now, but yeah, it's a yeah. very, very interesting. Ah, oh, bro, like, if you, if you really get into it, man, I mean, like, you really want to get into it, man. Like, there's, you, you name any form of sex from group sex to uh, adulterous to uh, adulterous sex to, you know, whatever. whatever. If that's your thing and, like, it interests you, like, it's in there. Uh, murder. Like, if you're, like, interested in, like, murder, it's in there, man. If you're interested yeah. in, like, <laughs> if, if, like, you've ever, if you're really So, I have a question for you, man, actually. Um, one thing my uncle, uh, told me was how, so a way he reads the Bible is he gets, um, revelations when he reads. So he'll like open up to a random page, I think, and then he'll start reading and then kind of let a revelation come to him. And I thought that was kind of cool. I was wondering if you do that too, or how you, how do you read the Bible? Oh, well, I usually do it with my wife, to be honest, man. I told you I'm not. Do you do the revelation thing though? Well, so it's it's interesting when you talk about your uncle doing that, man. So what they yeah. say about the Bible is actually a living word. So a living word, which means like it could mean something different in ten different seasons, man. So uh, that's why the, it's a living word. So when he opens it up and he just, all right, God, direct me where it is you want me to go, and I'll go there today, man, and then go there, and then you'll get something different. Every single time you read something, like yeah, ah, it doesn't yeah. mean just one. It doesn't mean just one. Ah, uh, I don't know how to explain it very well. Yeah, it's like, like it. You can you can get understanding on many levels. Yes, you you, you could read it a hundred different times and still never fully ever. You you'll never fully understand it. You have yeah. you have like. Uh, a better understanding of what direction you're supposed to go but as a man for any man out there i would recommend the first book anybody should ever read well beside behind the gospels because understanding who jesus is is, is important but you really want to get into a man proverbs though mm. like you want to talk about getting slapped in the face as a man oh man it's a good book to really reflect on yourself and be like, damn, I got to get my shit together, man. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and it, it, it's so like, what's an example? Like, um, how has that well, happened to you? Uh, just recent uh, experience with my own life. If I would have had somebody directing me to this, you know, 10 years ago and really implementing these principles within that book i would have saved myself a lot of uh trouble there's a lot of wisdom within that book right and it's really repetitive like i can't tell you how many times it tells you as a man to stay away from 
what it would describe as like the adulterous woman, but I'm going to put it as bluntly as possible. And this might offend somebody in the future if anybody's ever watching this, man. But, <laughs> hey, man, stay away from them holes, bro. <laughs> it's, it's that simple. Stay away. Yeah. Over and over. And in a manner that, like, you, you've never really put it in perspective, man. But it also talks about, uh, over and over, about a quarrelsome wife. Like, like how horrible that is as a... So it, it it could like really for women it has a benefit too, man. So if like your wife reads it, like it can give her some conviction as well. Like, hey, if your wife was always arguing with you, like it basically just says over and over, it's better to like die than live with a quarrelsome wife. Uh it tells you how to manage your finances. It tells you like example, like like don't don't stoop down to somebody's level who's stupid because you'll be stupid too. And that's not the exact words, but like, I know it sounds so basic, but when you like really break it down, you're like, ooh, I can't remember the one was last night, but it really hit. I was like, ooh, that's a, that's a good one. I know there was one in Corinthians that was like, don't uh, lower your yoke or don't like bring yourself down to yoke. To a fool's level. An, a fool's level. Another. Something. No, yeah, no, I can't really remember, yeah. but. There's one. There's a lot of those similar in Proverbs, man. And uh, and for those who don't know, a yoke is when you have like the horses or some animal pulling something. So it's about pulling things together. But like you don't want to bring yourself down to pull. You you want to. I I don't really know, but something like your, that. Your your momentum, your energy is centered where neither one of you will. Uh, like the bull is or the, the the ox is pulling like the the what what do they use to like till the tiller till to till, till, till yeah right so the ox is and there's like a a rope around you and around the ox so the the ox won't like just drag you like along like you know what i mean yeah you're you're that, that, that that's a good man Raj. you're that's a very good uh <laughs> you're pretty up there man um, no, yeah, no. Exactly. I mean, uh, I, you know, it's my roommate, Matthew. I like, he, he helps me like learn parts of the Bible. And then like, when I'm able to, he's really awesome. Uh, I'm able to talk about it with him and um, just kind of get a little more intuition for, for things and kind of like just bounce off my ideas of what I think about it too. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice. Yeah, yeah, no, but that that's good, man. But like Corinthians, right? It's a uh, yeah, it's from so Corinthians. Yeah. So so there's like First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, but these are letters that the yeah. Apostle Paul wrote to the churches to like warn them. Yeah. Like, hey, man, y'all got y'all got to get your shit together. Y'all are really fucking up. And yeah, yeah, you guys just saw Jesus in the flesh. You guys were there when he was present, and you guys are still fucking up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he wrote he wrote letters to all these churches like trying to uh, uh so we try and reel it into the good good and evil uh motif yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I, we kind of got like sidetracked a little bit man with yeah, yeah. the conversation but yeah the yeah. whole the whole premise the whole premise is that in my opinion obedience is what promotes the relationship sin is what inhibits the relationship and they're both like the same thing either you're obedient or you're not when you're not obedient you're in sin when you're obedient you're in favor right and thank god for uh jesus because like there was no hope for us before i mean like we just had <laughs> there was no hope bro if it was now like if we didn't have Jesus now. God would have already destroyed like the United States, bro. He'd have been like, "All right, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and put my hand on this and crush them real quick," you know. So I think if you like read, maybe that's something we can get into in future conversations. Like, what is obedience, right? And what is sin? That's probably good conversations for the next two. Let's do those. What is obedience and what is sin? Can we agree on that now? Um, the next two. The next two. Yeah, maybe maybe we can just like yeah, we can we can uh yeah, that sounds okay. We can dive into what is obedience. obedience. Like 
what is obedience, man? You yeah. know, and like, let's really like, what is obedience, man? You know? Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's make the next, the but, next video on obedience and we'll really dig into that. And sin's kind of involved in that too, for sure. Sin's always okay, there. We, 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 we can do both, but obedience. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what was I getting into, man? My fault. I got, I got sidetracked because I just wanted to make sure that we could get into that, man. That'd be a good, yeah. a good topic for both of us. Yeah. But, uh, um, what was I at, Raj? Uh, well, we were talking about Corinthians, yoke. I wanted to reel it in with, uh, how that relates to, uh, good and evil. Um, oh, yeah. so and then you started talking about obedience I, I, and sin. I, I, I really feel like with obedience, like with, when I hear your perspective on how you view God, like, it, it, it's so in alignment with somewhat about 90 something percent in alignment with uh the, the the christian deity yahweh right or the jewish deity as well but yahweh where uh i think if you actually looked at what he what he considers like obedience you you wouldn't disagree with it you would be like, oh, I could definitely see that. And you could see why, like, when you're this way, I mean, for example, man, from my personal perspective, people should be married before they have sex, right? Why is that? Um, well, it's because, like, I think back in the olden days, before birth control, sex made babies. So mm. you don't want to uh, it, like have You're a so low... man, dude. <laughs> mm? You're yeah, yeah. You don't right. want to have. You You're don't want to be making babies right, without without like the support of the father, make getting resources and feeding that baby and making that baby grow to be you know a, a solid human. So before DNA, before birth control, right? The reason why people would be so obedient to like sex is because there were consequences for it, right? So prior to like Jesus, there was Mosaic law, right? And Mosaic law was like really strict for a reason because in order to be atoned for your sin, there had to be a sacrifice back in the day, or you just were, were you know, to be sacrificed, right? So like back when in Mosaic law, which is not after applicable now. So when you hear people saying like stone your neighbor because they're working on that's not an applicable law anymore, man. That's old testament. So when people are like, well, the Bible says that. Okay, well, that, that's not applicable, man. Jesus changed the whole game. Mm -hmm. But like uh but like uh people would be very conscientious about doing things because there would be consequences for it. Like so if you weren't married and you had a kid, like you would you you would be punished severely, right? Or if you had a kid out of uh, outside of your marriage, like yeah, you would be killed. Like that was adultery. Like you'd be killed for adultery. So when you get into the story of like David, right? King David. You know the story of David. David and Goliath with the slingshot. Oh, so so that was him. So that was David. David actually was this little man that came and killed Goliath, right? Mm -hmm. And he became a great king of Israel, right? Mm. So David, was, they said, was a man that was after God's own heart. But David was a, was a man that was obedient, a man that was, uh, like, really after God's own heart. But what, we, what the Bible teaches you about David, man, is he actually was an adulterer. He was a murderer. So what David did, he had an affair with a woman, Bathsheba, right? And Bathsheba was... Married, her husband was at war. Her husband's name was Uriah, right? So David saw her, and what scripture kind of like a scripture kind of uh depicts is that he forcefully took her in and she got pregnant, right? So what'd he do? He tried to cover it up. So he said, All right, man, I'm gonna get Uriah back here because Uriah was in war at the time. He said, I'm going to get Uriah back here. I'm going to call him back from war. I'm going to try to get him to have sex with you so he thinks that the child is his, right? Shit. <laughs> this, is what, this is what David did, man. Like, there's, man, if you read the Bible, bro, these, these people were so... Yeah, these, you know, these, people, these people were ratchet, bro. bro they, they, I'm telling you, man, they were... They were, man. Yeah. And 
So, but he did. He he was like, hey, man, I'm trying to get him back. And the guy said, no, I'm not leaving my comrades. I'm staying here. And I'm going to continue to fight. Uh, so then, so then what did David do? David had him killed. So he had him killed, right? And then, uh, you know, basically, you know, everybody was like, man, David, what a, what a freaking scumbag. And then God, there's a story how God kind of punished him somewhat for his sin. Yeah. That's where actually King, King, King Solomon was David's son. He was the offspring of uh, David and Bathsheba. So King Solomon uh, actually wrote King Solomon actually wrote Proverbs too. So uh, when you hear this stuff, man, the, these people are like so relatable to like everybody in time. When you see how God uses like the most ratchet people to advance His agenda, bro, it's like it just it's, it's so crazy. Yeah. And so when, well, okay, so everybody was like getting back to good and evil. Like another um, no, no, no. That I think that kind of involved it a little because david did like some shitty shit with the wife and the affair and kind of got punished for it right so uh but like so but god is you know forgiving and i don't know what happened after with david but hopefully he worked it out with god i don't know he repented he repented repented. sure and he was in he was in god's favor again man cool 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 yeah so like a way I think about good and evil is yin and yang too. And I think it's a beautiful like symbol too. And it kind of shows um, the uh, how you can't have one without the other. So they both have to exist and to create a reality. And there's like, and but there's also positive and negative sides for the good. And that's, maybe that's the dot, like, in the white thing there's like a black dot and in the black thing there's a white dot and so um it's like uh they they need each other to exist so and there's positive and negative aspects in both good and evil so like you could be good but kind of do an evil thing because you're trying to be good but you don't really I don't know. It's like it's not so straightforward. The good and evil. There, it's like it, it's a dance of the two, and they're like. I think I think you're swirling. overcomplicating. You're on. You, I think you're overcomplicating. You're on to exactly the right point, though. Yeah. Is that God? God will use anything. But it's all God. Kingdom. Good exactly. and evil is God. all God. I uh, don't necessarily agree with that, but yeah. I get what you're saying somewhat. But because the yin and yang, it's that, like the duality but then there's the oneness of the yin and yang and that the oneness is god i would say this man is that and it's kind of like nighttime and daytime you have to have the cycles of nighttime and daytime to get uh evolution and get something going and you know do that okay i would say this man from my perspective yeah god uses everything to his advantage man what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it for his favor. Yeah. So, like, the fact that... So, here's what you, here's what you don't know, man. Let me see if you actually know this, man. Who's all right, all right. Who, who's the descendant of David? Uh, I don't know. No say, senor. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, G- wait. Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. Look this up, bro. Wait, oh. what? What are you talking yes, about? Tell you. Jesus I'm was born you, of the dude. Virgin Mary. That's pretty clear. Okay, so G- Jesus was a descendant of David, okay? Oh, because Mary was a descendant of David? Bro, uh, let's go back even further, man. Uh, may- maybe I'm, no, yeah, I'm, I'm going back further now. So Joseph, right? Uh, the story of Joseph, dude. It, it's the actually a crazy story, code. too. Well, he was, he was, uh, he was so. What was it? Was it Joseph? I'm thinking of man was sold into slavery by his siblings. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so right. So there's, there's a there's a there's yeah. A whole they, story the, his siblings there. fucked him over, but he forgave them or yeah. something. Yes, but his siblings, bro. You really got to get into these, man. When, when you when you really dive into these stories, it's fucking amazing, bro. You you can't you can't, and it kind of like puts you at ease because if you know if you've ever been like a really piece of shit human being, like, you're like, oh, man, all these people were, like, all these people were, and God, like, still favored them. 
and it's seemingly it's seemingly like God favored those that were like the biggest scumbags. Like we we put so much clout into these individuals, like in biblically, like you know, from Abraham to Isaac to uh um was it Jacob to Joseph to you know to Noah and all these people were like really, really, really flawed human beings that really shit the bed every time like God told them to do something, man. They like shit the bed. They <laughs> fucked they fucked it up. And God still said, Okay, man, you're still my guy. I still got yeah. you. Yeah. Now yeah. get it right. Get it right. Get yeah. it right. Get it right. And but the thing like ancient or old testament is like it was pretty much like all old like it the Israelites that he favored, man, because they all kind of like came from uh, Abraham. So like, you just favor them, no matter. And if you look at, I don't know if this is gonna sound whatever, but like the the Israelites, the Jews, whatever, like bro, they were like jacked up. Like every single time, like God saved them from something, they just turned their back on him. And okay, well, you know, well, who needs God now? Like when God freed them from Egypt. They're running around the desert, and then they're like, whoa, 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 what, what kind of God do we have? He, he just took you out of slavery, and now you're free, and you're complaining that you don't have food now because you're free. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, why don't you go be a slave again, you know? And then mm. what do they do? They started worshiping like a golden cow, and they started having like sexual orgies and things of that nature, bro. And then God's like, what are you guys doing, man, you know? It seems bro, like uh, uh, it's no, me. No, I'm, this, 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 this is with all, the false bro, gods, this <laughs> bro. This is all. This is all like in the Bible, bro. You can't. Yeah, yeah. Know. No, no. I, I know. Yeah, it was like they they wandered for fifteen years or something, years. and forty years, twenty 40 years. years, forty years, forty years. Jeez, Jesus, forty years, Christ, man. <laughs> and and and, and, and Mo Moses is guiding them, and just imagine as Moses like. The, the the scrutiny you're facing, everybody's like, "Who is this fucking idiot that's leading us, man? You're, you're taking us to the promised land." Part of water, like, though. I it? mean, what the fuck is it? Well, part of the sea, man. Is but here's the thing, exactly, it's like you're saying, literally part of the Red Sea. So uh, there, there's debate on how what the verbiage was, like dried, whatever, man. But like literally, they walked across the Red Sea to flee from Egypt, right? And God made that happen. And they were all there when it happened, and then they get into the desert, and all of a sudden they're like, "Well, where's this God now?" Like, you know what I mean? Like, no matter what, no matter how many times like God saved them, like they've always turned their back, and it's just like kind of like the story of all of us, man. No matter how many times like God has like favored us, man, we we we've all fucked it up and yeah. pissed it off, and and yeah. But but the the whole point is is like there's Jesus now that like you're forgiven like you just gotta you know accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and everything that you've ever done is atoned for like you know what I mean Isn't yeah that yeah and I mean I I I like the phrase like seeking God like as long as you're seeking God and you're uh, and his righteousness, you're 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 good, man. Like you don't well, have to trip about all these things. You're, you're definitely seeking, man. And I think you should like just dive into like some shit, bro. You're seeking, man. Yeah. And what I'm telling you is, it's not you seeking God. I definitely man. have a resistance towards like reading and stuff. <laughs> uh, so that that's that 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 means something, man. But like, yeah. uh, just know this, man. When you're it's not you seeking. It's God seeking you right now, bro. Yeah. And the yeah. fact the, the the fact that you're like gravitating, like you're 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 it, it's cool. Like we we never had these kind of conversations, man. Everything's always been, you know, crypto, blockchain. Uh, we had we had a couple conversations about. I'm stuff telling outside, you, man. You know Peace Ants I mean? is a God seeking organization now. That's good, bro. <laughs> well, we're we're on to something here. And uh, but the whole point that I'm making, man, is like it's not you seeking, like God seeks you, man. And the thing is, is I don't think people realize is like well, no, I definitely am seeking. Like uh it's no, definitely no, 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 no. No, no it's an not. internal it's you. an internal seeking. 
yeah god is seeking i seek you, within bro. and then that's yeah. where god and then god's like and when you seek you shall find so god god's right there and i just seek and then all right cool now god oh god god like seeks us relentlessly man and for you, you, you I, don't, I don't want to put your business out there, but you told me, you know, kind of what happened. And yeah, that, ha- that happened for a reason, bro. Like, not, not I don't want to say that. It didn't happen for a reason, man. That's him. Hey, come to me. Yeah, absolutely. Come. Come. Yeah. Come. This is the God that will leave the 99 to come save you because you're that valuable mm-hmm. to him, man. Like, the God will, this God will. Like, bro, if, uh, maybe one of these future ones, man, I'll give a few testimonies, man. But, like, we we really do, He God really does, like, speak the most troubled people and, like, relentlessly, like, the, the parable of the prodigal son, man, like, all of heaven rejoices, like, when one person, like, returns to God. Like, no matter how far you stray, like, you know, if you, like, stray really, really off the deep end, man, and you just come back and you ask for forgiveness and you mean it wholeheartedly and you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, like, the whole heaven, like, throws a party. Like, they're like, Raj, 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 shit, Raj, you see him down there, bro? Yeah. Like, it's really like that, man, you know? And and where where like people like yourself like get, I I totally get it, man. Where they get stuck at is where they see like certain Christians and they're like Pharisees, bro. You know what a Pharisee is? Mm, yeah, they're like no. Pharisees. I thought you said heresy, but what's Pharisee? Pharisee. Pharisees were like in ancient time or or in Jewish, even during the times of Christ, they were like the highest priests or highest whatever uh, authority within the church and they knew like they memorized scripture they memorized so what what they would do is things like this they would be like oh i'm i'm so holy like right where they knew scripture so well well so if i looked at you and scripture says hey man like you're not supposed to be taking these recreational drugs okay and you're you're a scumbag for doing it and i don't do it so i'm better than you that's like an example of being a pharisee right Ah, and gotcha, gotcha. What, what, so what, what, what Jesus did when he came, man, he actually like hung out with the drunks, like the prostitutes, the the murderers, and that's why everybody couldn't stand him. Why are you associating yourself with them? He's like, what? You you missed it. Like all of you have missed the point, man. Like you've made scripture your god, that you've missed the big picture of it. And I think that's what I'm saying is like people like yourself, that's where you get caught up into it, man. And be careful where you like dwell in and like churches, man, because you could get caught up in stuff like that where people are Pharisees and they need a Pharisectomy, right? Yeah. My and, uh... my experience with church has been pretty positive, though. Like um, yeah. and like even in the last uh, church thing I went to, uh, I went with my mom and uh, like in the middle of the service, I felt like God was like just get up and take a walk. And I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> and I got up and I left and I took a walk. And it's like, it was great. Yeah. So I don't know. It's like God, like God's church is everywhere. Uh, but we make churches to kind of like maybe. Well, so, yeah. Well, so so church, churches are important for gathering, man. And like, yeah. Having, yeah. It's a good having, place to gather. Yeah. Have, having, having a community, it means something, man. So yeah. churches in, in ancient times were like people are in, in, back in times were like people's houses. Like people used uh-huh. to have service at like their houses, and one of the most intimate things you can actually do, like biblically, with somebody is like break bread. You could eat with somebody. Like it, that's literally like the the next most intimate thing next to like sex. Is yeah. like when we like when we like eat with each other. That's like hey man, we're like breaking bread together. That means something. Like you know when Jesus broke the bread at the Last Supper and everything like that, right? Huh. So like, but what what I'm saying is is like, I think not even just maybe you, but like people they get caught up in is you, you, you're desperately seeking. You are, and it's great, man. And I, I encourage you like read, I'm not going to 
tell you you have to read, but I encourage you 100% like well, reading. I am, I am reading this thing called the Mahabharata, which is like the first, one of the first books for the Bhagavad Gita or something. So I'm, I'm actually getting a little interested in the Hindu uh, scriptures a little bit. It's, yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, if you're ever interested, man, I think we should like read together, man. You know, that'd be pretty cool. And that'd it'd be, be cool. like, I have, I have somebody... I have somebody I could read with that's like we're kind of like at eye level, man. You know, we're not trying yeah. to watch each other. We're not trying to convince each other. But yeah. yeah, definitely read. And what I was getting the point was is people get caught up in these. What a Christian Christianity's problem is Christianity. Like I, I just see so much from my little five year walk. I've been doing this now, where I've backslid and I've whatever you know. I've seen. So much like hypocrisy, so much, oh, how people, they, they love you, they love you, but then there's like these church mafia, like where, yeah, as long as you're going to church with these people, like, yeah, we're we're good. But if you decide like, hey, man, this church maybe isn't for me, I'm going to go somewhere else, well, you're, all of a sudden you're not, like, this person's, we're not friends anymore. And I'm like, mm. I started learning, and I, I don't know, that, that, that kind of like bothered me in certain aspects. I'm like, man, this this is how things really are. I'm new to this, and I was like, this is how things really are. Like, all these people, like, oh, they were all, like, really, really good to us. And all of a sudden, like, we decided we're going to go somewhere else. And then now we're, uh, like, people look at you, like, as I remember going back for a buddy of mine's funeral, and people would be like, you know, and I'm like, mm. uh, whatever. But, uh, yeah, that is what deters people but the whole premise of it is man is you're not supposed to focus on people man your whole premise is you just focus on god jesus and they'll give you what you need man and you know love others man that's it i think it's that simple man yeah like we we, we kind of overcomplicate it and there's yeah. some laws and stuff with all this that we got to obey and i think that those are important no but like if your heart isn't like, what are your intentions when you're doing something is, like, more important. I think biblically it, like, describes that, man. What are your intentions you're trying to do versus what you're doing? You know what I mean? Because you see all these people on uh, YouTube now, and they're making videos of them donating to charity, like, giving people money. And, like, biblically it tells you, man, when you give to the needy, don't let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. Like, you're not supposed to be bragging about that. Like, bo mm -hmm. boasting about charity, like, that's it. You got your reward here on earth. Like, there's no, there's nothing up there waiting for you. Like, okay, man, you, you decided that you wanted to show everybody how good you are, which is what the Pharisees would do. But, like, you want to show everybody, hey, look, I gave this person $500. I gave all these people $500. Yeah, God don't care. You did that so you can get likes in a in a in a social media, so you can get more people to follow you, so you can hopefully monetize your channel and you can make money off of it, right? So, like when I when I see a lot of these, and for whatever reason, maybe it's because of what I'm watching the algorithm on YouTube now. So like a lot of these people go to these festivals, like these LGBT fests, and they uh, preach the gospel, okay? Which none of these people want to hear it, man. So like you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, the thing the thing about preaching is like it's like uh one thing that rubs me the wrong way is like and I'm I apologize, I don't mean to offend, but like uh when people say uh you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it just feels like um a forced thing that's mm -hmm. like, oh, if you do this, then you'll be good or or something weird like that. And but um I so I actually like mentally I I think of it differently now. I think of Jesus as the body and um and God is like the heart almost. And so yeah, it's kind of like I don't know. So whenever people talk about Jesus, that's that's how I, I'm interpreting it differently. <laughs> I get it. I get it, man. And yeah. and we so the only way you can capture people is by being the example, right? So for you, I'm probably not a good example. I'm not going to lie, man. But like, I got a buddy of mine. We go out to like breakfast on Friday mornings every all the time. And we have a group of men. We all, and I'm, we're pretty much the older guys now. I'm, that's the age I'm at now. I'm the older guy. 
<laughs> turned 40. But like I got all these younger guys in their twenties now. Yeah. yeah. So we got all these younger guys in their twenties now. And uh like I think uh you can't capture people by preaching. You can only capture people by being an example. So like if you're doing what you're supposed to do and you're being who you're supposed to be, people will gravitate to you, man. Like, hey, there's something different about you, man. And then when they start asking questions, like, you know, kind of like you are, man. Like, you know, when you start asking questions, that's what I'm saying. I'm telling you, it's not, I, I, I kind of know why we're doing this, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, Raj. <laughs> I know why we're doing this, but I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, and, like, and I think uh, it, it kind of relates to parenting, too. Like, uh, one of the things I say is children won't do as you say, they'll do as you do. And so, yeah, uh, yeah I think it, you're right. yeah, what you're saying kind of hits that nail on the head. Yeah, so what happens when I, when I see a lot of these people and they go to these, you know, these LGBT uh, gatherings and they want to preach the gospel and they're claiming they do it because they want to save souls, but yet they're posted it on social media and hoping that people will follow them so they can get more followers and probably monetize their channel. So what I see when I see that stuff is I don't see people whose intentions are pure because none of these people are inquiring about like Jesus. They're not interested. And in like, I mean, I wouldn't generalize to everyone like that. Maybe some, some are and aren't. I'm not. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I would say most of the people at these festivals aren't interested. And like they, they had generally, they generally, you could see within these videos, they generally have a, a general distaste for anything, biblically, okay, and mm. that's them. That's that's not that's not our our problem. That's their problem. And our our our, what these people do is, well, I'm here to try to tell you the truth because I want to save. No, you don't want to save your soul. Your intention, 100%, is not to save people's souls. Your intention is to grow your Facebook channel, so you can get create controversy so more people will follow you when you see these people screaming at you how much you piece of shit fuck you and they're like fuck you and fuck you know they they say like you know you're your savior and all that stuff man you know i'm like oh look at how evil these people are well no man you're kind of provoking these people and they're non-believers so you can't hold them accountable for their because you're not the judge but you can't hold them accountable for their behavior man so what you're what basically what it tells us to do is take a step back and just like pray for them and let God touch them. Yeah, yeah, so, and like you said, it's all about love, right? So it's kind of mm -hmm. just like love them, you know. It's it's yes. you know they're expressing themselves, they're doing something, you know. That's I I went to a pride parade and I really like seeing the girls' boobs and I was like, Lord have mercy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, so can I can I can I give you two examples and I've seen firsthand, bro. I've seen this firsthand, Raj. I didn't, I didn't used to believe in this stuff. I didn't used to believe in like like demonic possessions and things like that, right? But I've, so firsthand, I've seen it two times where I've seen the first time I've seen one woman or, I don't want to offend I hope this doesn't offend anybody in the future. I don't, I'm not saying anything about anybody. But I seen one woman firsthand experience repent from homosexuality. Of course, but what happens with people, right? Homosexuality typically is a sin. So it's no it holds more weight than other sins, but it's sexual immorality. It's it's on the same equivalent as uh adultery, it's on the same equivalent as premarital sex, right? And what Christians like some Christians like to do is put a lot of clout and attention on the obvious one and dismiss the other ones and you see like all these pastors having affairs and but yet we're we're sitting here preaching against you know the obvious right so like i seen it with my own eyes the first time one woman actually felt so much conviction and that's what it comes to man you will not repent from anything until your conviction until you feel conviction for it like if you're uh if you're an alcoholic and you're just constantly drunk all the time and you're making bad decisions all the time and you don't feel you're doing anything wrong, you're not gonna repent from it ever, man. You know? It's you, you will never re 
we we cannot make people feel conviction. Only only God can do that. You know what I mean? So yeah. all these people going around and going around and trying to, well, I'm here to preach the gospel. Okay, good, man. That's what God calls us to do, man. But if someone's not receptive to it, man, you're not. It says, do not give the dogs what is holy. You know. Uh, uh, don't throw your, don't cast your pearls before swine, and don't give to dogs what is holy, man. You know what I mean? And these are Jesus's words. These aren't mine. That's a, that's that gangster Jesus, bro. Yeah, Jesus but uh, saying, Jesus man. also said, "Turn the other cheek." So when you see people doing things you don't like, you know, it's, turn the other cheek. <laughs> I don't know. So what? What that was? If somebody like he said, if somebody like slaps this one cheek, turn the other cheek and let him slap that one. He's like, don't, mm-hmm. like, don't throw a punch back, bro. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I, I thought it meant like, you know, just observe what, what you want. But, so we, we'll, we'll get into that one day about what the context is behind that. And that's what happens with a lot of a lot of different scripture, man, is people yeah. take it out of context and they use it for something that it really doesn't wasn't meant to begin with or to convey to begin with. Well, you know okay, I mean? wait, let saying? me let me see what Chat GPT says about turn the other cheek, because that mm-hmm. that's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Um what does Jesus say about turn the other cheek? And what does it mean? ChatGBT is pretty fucking cool, dude, because they they can give you some complex explanations and stuff like this. All right, so the phrase turn the other cheek comes from Jesus' sermon on the mount in the Bible, specifically found in the Gospel of Matthew 5, 38 through 39. Here's the relevant passage. You have heard that it was said, eye for an eye, Eye for eye, tooth for and tooth for tooth, but I tell you, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. All right, there's the slap. So meaning and context, literal interpretation. On a surface level, the instruction is straightforward. If someone physically strikes you on one cheek, a slap typically being a form of insult. Uh, rather than a serious attempt to injure, you should offer them the other cheek instead of reta- retaliating. Deeper meaning. The teaching of, is part of a larger section where Jesus challenges the existing interpretations of the law of Moses, an eye for an eye, was a legal principle from the Old Testament intended to limit retribution, proportional punishment. Jesus extends this to teach non-retaliation and non-violence. By advising to turn the other cheek, Jesus advocates for a response to aggression with a posture of forgiveness and peace, rather than revenge or escalation. This action is meant to disrupt the cycle of violence and demonstrate moral superiority. Ethical and social implications. This instruction encourages followers to avoid descending into into vindictive behaviors. It promotes mercy and patience. Socially, it sets a tone for community behavior that values reconciliation and enduring personal dignity in the face of affronts. Critics argue that this approach might encourage passivity in the face of injustice or abuse. However, supporters claim it's about choosing a higher moral path that can potentially transform an adversary. In in practical Mm -hmm. application, it's often interpreted as advocating for nonviolent resistance, not necessarily passive or submissive behavior, but a principled stand against aggression. In essence, turn the other cheek symbolizes a radical departure from the human inclination towards revenge, urging instead a transformative and redemptive approach to conflict. This teaching has had a profound influence on Christian thought about peace, justice, and interpersonal conduct. Now, what do you Fucking think? Me. Bro? No, yeah, I, I mean, I so it, it it is kind of like saying what I was kind of interpreting it as is like it's about forgiveness and um, oh, here, stuff let me, like let me, that. Let me give it, let me give a simple example, right? Yeah. Oh. Lord forgives, God forgives, right? How many times has God forgiven you, right? And 
your salvation depends on his forgiveness. Sometimes somebody else's salvation depends on your forgiveness, man. So if you've done wrong to somebody, maybe you feel like conviction about how wrong you've done that you don't deserve forgiveness for it, right? And if you, as a person who was the one that was violated, don't forgive that individual, the individual, you just substantiate what that person feels. And that person's salvation won't happen because you didn't forgive it. So biblically, what it tells you, how you forgive others is how God will forgive you, man. And maybe others don't deserve forgiveness for what they've done to you, but you don't deserve any forgiveness from God either, but yet he gives it freely, man, you know? So that turn the other cheek thing, that's a pretty powerful thing. And when we operate under, like I told you before, man, sometimes I feel like just punching somebody in the face is fully justified. But what is that? Everything you just read, just 100 percent. It's proved that. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus and it said, reminds oh, me, man. too. Of, it reminds me, too, of uh, with the with the woman adulterer or something like. Uh, and then Jesus was like, he, those he whoever has no sin. Cast, yeah. That's the first stone. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that, 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 those were those were the Pharisees that wanted to like own her because whatever whatever the whatever the story was that some believe it was Mary Magdalene some people don't know who it actually was man you know mm. it's an adulterous woman whatever but he is without who who is of without sin and cast the first stone also Jesus the first person he actually revealed himself to was an adulterous woman as a messiah was an adulterous woman so the Samaritan woman at the well was the first person that Jesus even the disciples following him knew there was something special about him, but they didn't know he was the Messiah yet. They just knew that this man was a powerful man and were willing to like follow him. So Jesus purposely deterred. It's like we're going through Samaria. So like going through Samaria in this time, we got to understand how crazy this was. It's like a Jew going through Nazi Germany during Nazi Germany time. Okay. And Jesus is like, no, nope, we're going this way to purposely find this Samaritan woman who was not an Israelite, who was not in God's favor, allegedly in Yahweh's favor, right? Purposely found her at the well. And this woman, this was her, she was married five times. She was with this other man. I don't know if the man was at the well or not. And Jesus went to her and told her, hey man, you know, we've been married five times and, uh, the man you're with isn't even your husband. So like, and she just felt so much conviction, but he told her like, you know, basically you're forgiven. But what he told her before she left, and this is where people misinterpret things is, well, yeah, he forgave her. Well, what he told her before she left was go and sin no more. Right. It wasn't like, Hey man, yeah, you're an adulterous woman. You're forgiven. Go ahead and keep being one. You know, it was go and sin no more. So, Repentance is one of the things that depends on people's. It's one of the main principles, man. And uh, you know, I, I kind of went into a bunch of side conversations, man, about adulterous women and all that. Just reminded me of that. But like the whole premise that we were talking about is sometimes your forgiveness, like you being, depends on somebody else's salvation depends on your forgiveness specifically, and that person may not deserve your forgiveness, but Neither did you deserve God's forgiveness, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, that's that turn the other cheek principle, man. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that uh, that idea of um, how you forgiving others is kind of reflective of God forgiving you. But then God always forgives you or something like that, so. No, no. That, biblically, that's not always true man god will forgive you in the same like when you when you're standing at judgment well, when you come to him you have wait. to come, you have to go to him otherwise yeah. yeah true well so non-believers there, there's like scripture that like suggests that like even like non-believers man they're judged by their heart like you know if they were never even exposed if they never even were exposed to the gospel like say like people in north korea right 
if they were never even exposed to the gospel, God will judge. He's so perfect, right? He will judge others accordingly. Like, how was your heart? How pure were you? You know what I mean? And I don't know, man. Uh, I don't have all the answers to all that shit, but the, the main thing is, is like, you know, God forgives, so we're supposed yeah. to, man. And the way you have unforgiveness for others is how God will unforgive you, man. And if you look at uh, one of the scariest things is if you're going to be like about God, like be 100% in or 100% out. One of my old pastors used to have this saying, or he has this saying, it's pretty cool, man. 99% obedience is 100% disobedience. Okay? Interesting. Oh, well, I did this. I did this. But yeah, but you know, it's like, oh, well, I did this, 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 and this. Yeah, but you were still blatantly disobedient in this right here. Like, you know, it'd be like, a uh, as a husband, okay, like you, why, well, I, I paid your medical bills, I took care of the kids, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this, but I still cheated on you, you know what I mean? But I, I did all this stuff, right? You know I mean? Right, right, right. But but you were still, you, would, would you be okay with a woman doing that to you? You know what I mean? You know? And a lot of times we would lose that empathy where we can't empathize with God because we're so busy focus on ourselves, man, that, you know, and you know what I like, I like this saying too, man, this reminds me of something, man, is when people, I, I told you the last time we talked uh, last week was like, God, like, jealously, like, seeks you, he is jealous, he is a jealous God, and that's, mm -hmm. scripture says that, man, and I, I explained it to you, because, like, if you had a kid, and your kid was calling somebody else's dad, you'd feel some type of way about it, you'd be like, ah, mm -hmm. that, that, man, that makes you feel that kind of pisses me off that this my son is calling another man dad. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, well, oh, yeah, so why would God be jealous? And you ever heard the saying, like, who do you think you are, God? You remember that? You know how people say that? Yes, he's God. Like, he created everything. Like, he has a right to want to be worshipped. He has a right to want to be, uh, there's anybody that should be worshipped. It should be God. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, who do you think you are, God, that people should worship you? But when you say that people should worship God, well, I don't want to worship a God like that if he thinks he should be worshipped. <laughs> like, but he's God, you know? So, I don't know. I'm kind of going off the tangent here. My bad. No, gosh. that's good, man. I think uh, I think we had a really good... Um, yeah. So, d would you say this concludes our discussion of good versus evil, or what do you think? Yes, yeah, I think it does. I think... I think me and you, we've gotten to a, a perspective, and I think that should be our objective whenever we have a discussion, is getting to a point that we reach a common ground or we just agree to disagree. Yeah, and yeah. I think here I, we may I, I, agree to disagree here, because, like, I'm all about the oneness, you know? I'm all about yin and yang, but then everything's God. So it's like, if as long as you're seeking God, you can almost do no wrong. <laughs> okay. But then there's that yoga of discrimination too. So it's like, it is like a life practice to discriminate between what is God and what is not God in a way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just uh, on, a, on a closing note here, man. Um, yeah. I need this, man. You know what I mean? And this is really cool that this is happening at this exact point in time and this exact moment in my life. I'm I'm pretty sure I told you what was going on with me in the past, the recent history and everything. And uh I appreciate this, Raj. So I really want to keep these going and I don't know what direction they're going, but it's going somewhere and wherever it's going, it's the right direction. So uh thank you. Right back at you, Matt. Thank you, man. There's like not not a lot of people I could do this with. So um yeah, thank you for being my buddy on crypto, yeah, I'm glad we uh, I'm glad we found each other on the, in the crypto first. Yeah, yeah. One day we're gonna we're gonna link up in person, bro. Uh, yeah, one day I'm gonna be over there in in San Jose or something. One day you'll be out here in Chicago or something, and we'll definitely uh, you know, break bread. No, or, or or even if I'm in California, bro. You know, I'll be like, hey, yeah. man, I'm gonna I'll, I'll take a drive, man. Or we'll meet halfway somewhere, you know. Make yeah, whatever yeah. It is. Definitely. And, and we'll definitely break bread, man. So on that note, man, uh, 
I guess I'll 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 conclude this, man. And I just uh, we got to pray to close it out. Well, let me let, let, let me let me do it, man, because I want to do it because you you challenged me, and it's something that I've been lacking in in my house, number one, but it's something I've been lacking in in life in general. But uh, I gotta I gotta work on this, and I'll I'll do this today. Man. Okay, all right, take on the prayer today. It's all you. All right, man. All right. Uh, all right, God, thank you for this moment with Raj where we've had a meaningful discussion. Uh, in honor of your glory, in honor of your, uh, what it is you want us to do, I know this direction is where I'm supposed to be going in this moment. I just want to thank you for this moment of bonding with Raj and Thank you for allowing me, allowing our paths to collide. Uh, what is it, about a year and a half ago now, man, maybe something around there, uh, right, roughly, right? Where we're leading into something that's actually like pleasing you. Uh, once again, I just wanna thank you for this moment. Thank you for this clarity and guiding me to where I'm supposed to be in this moment where I know Raj doesn't understand, but I think you, and I both know and understand where we're heading. Um, bless Roz, bless his family, bless his finances, bless his home, bless his job. Let every door open that's for you in honor of you, uh, open for him. Let every door that's not for him and does not uh, collide with your will uh, not be open or closed, whatever that is, you know? So working on this prayer, thank God, forgive me. And, uh, Look forward to next week's discussion and bless his health, bless my family, and in uh, Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I'm getting better at it, bro, see? Dude, this, <laughs> you're better at it. You're, like, doing, like, high-level prayers right there, bro. That's, like, elite status oh. prayers. <laughs> no, when, 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 you're, when you're praying, man, it should be organic, man. You shouldn't even have to think about it, but I'm getting there, man. And yeah. uh, I haven't been... I haven't been Doing it well, but I'm getting there. So you're doing good, Matt. Keep All it right, up. Bro, well, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll definitely chat in the in the chat. If anybody is ever interested in listening to this in the future that wants to, like, you know, come in and chat with us, we'll you know, open up the door. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I'm gonna put the Peace Ants Discord in the description. You can join in the auditorium, 4 p.m. PST. Come on down, and we'll. We'll do some God Friday discussions. All right, man. All right, Roz, man. You have a good night, bro. All right, man. Peace.